Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and call on the name of the Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Rod and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from the prophet Job, chapter 1, 19. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their older brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the donkey speeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven, and burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels, and took them, and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came yet another and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. Behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. <clears throat> then Job arose and tore his robe, and shaved his head, and fell on the ground in worship. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in his book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed yet in my flesh, I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm is from Psalm 4. There are many who say, who will show us some good. Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Our second reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 4. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We stand in reverence to the Holy Gospel and speak for all of you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, says to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. Now a jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and 
held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together then in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into the heavens, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from thence he will come to judge us living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last
suffered. He lost loved ones, even his own children, before his time came. How is it that a man like that, that has suffered in such a way, can come up every single Sunday and say, it's a good day? The reason why we had that long reading in there from the prophet Job is because it was brought to my attention that Job was on the forefront of Roger's mind when he was coming to the end of his pilgrimage here on earth. And it's right for us to meditate upon this one of God's own dear children. Especially when life is going hard and difficult. At the beginning of Job, we hear of a man who seems to have it all. This guy had thousands of sheep and cattle and donkeys and servants. He was blessed with the love of a faithful woman. He had seven sons and three daughters. He was blessed so much, the Word of God even says that of this man, there was none greater than him of all the people of the east. But what happens when God's faithful people are experiencing great joys here in this life, well, there is one that simply cannot stand the sight of it. An old ancient and evil foe, Satan himself, and it is remarkable that in Job's writings we hear that Satan appeared in the very presence of God, in the throne room of God in paradise, and he questions God concerning this servant, Job. He says to God, Does Job fear you for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him in his house, and all that he has on every side? That is, of course, Job loves you. Of course, he fears you and trusts in you. You've given him everything. This man lacks nothing that is good upon the earth. How can he not fear, love, and trust in you? <coughs> but, if you take away everything that is his, then he will curse you to your face. And now here's something that's really hard for us, God's dear people, to wrestle with. God allows it. <laughs> he allows Job to be handed over into Satan's claws to do with him so what we heard in our reading, Satan took everything that was his. Took away his flocks and his herds, took away his servants, took away even his ten children. And if that wasn't enough, we left out a portion that he afflicted Job with sores and boils from the crown of his head all the way to the soles of his feet. And yet what was Job's response in the midst of all that? We hear it in the 19th chapter. I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh, I shall see God. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not enough, how my heart faints within me. This is something that Satan will never understand. This is something that the sinful fallen world will never understand. That we fear, love, and trust in God, not because we have everything in the world. Not because we never suffer or go through tribulation and hardship. But we fear, love, and trust in God because He has given us the only thing we truly need. There is no doubt that He has given us our life. He has given us our food, our clothing, our house, our home. Everything that we need to support this body and life. But He has given us something so much more valuable. He has given us His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The one who loved you, who loved me, who loves Roger so much. That He forsook everything. He left His glorious throne in heaven. He left the endless
the singing of the angel choirs in paradise to be born here on earth. To be born in our flesh. Not in a royal palace like he deserved, but in a cattle stall. <laughs> to poor peasant mom and dad, Mary and Joseph. Christ our Lord loved us so much that he walked on this earth with us. And as the scriptures say, suffered every temptation and tribulation that is so common to us, and yet is so perfect, without sin. Keeping the good fight of faith, perfectly fear, loving, and trusting in God, His Heavenly Father, not for His own benefit, but for your benefit, brothers. Christ our Lord was willing to suffer all things in this world, even being betrayed by one of his own beloved disciples, being falsely arrested and shamefully treated, and then eventually nailed upon that old rugged cross, hand and foot, <laughs> to bleed, to shed his blood as a final sacrifice for sin, and even blessed words that he said from that cross, when Christ rang out under the cover of darkness, it is finished. That is what you and I as God's faithful people bring hold of, especially on days like today. It is finished. No more suffering. No more tribulation for his saints that have already been called on to paradise. For you, for me, for God's faithful, it is finished. No more the threat of sin against us. No more is God's wrath burning hot against us. Our sins are completely forgiven by Christ our Lord. And not only that, it is finished. He rested on the Sabbath day, laying stone cold in that tomb so that on Easter Sunday morning he might rise again to new life. And so join his faithful people to that life through faith. A life which you and I already experience here on earth as we are being built up in the faith by the holy word of God and by his holy sacraments. A life that Roger now gets to see face to face in paradise with all the faithful who have already gone on before him. Because by God's grace, even in the midst of suffering and tribulation, Roger fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. And now he has been awarded the crown of righteousness. And I can't prove this as a fact, but perhaps when St. Peter was welcoming in through the pearly door, our gates of paradise, instead of a nice gold crown, he was handed a perfect fit, white felt Stenson hat. But a crown nonetheless that will never be taken away. The crown of eternal life in paradise. He is truly blessed now to be with our crucified and risen Lord. But thanks be to God, He enjoyed earthly blessings as well. For even though he did suffer much, as we all do, he did not have unfaithful friends at his end that tried to accuse him, saying he was suffering for his own fault, like Job's friends did to him. He did not have everyone he loves abandon and flee from him, as Christ our Lord suffered during the last hour. <coughs> Because he was given faith and because he boldly gave that faith to his children. At his last moment, he got one more kindness from our God. Not being left or abandoned, but being surrounded by those he loved, by those he cherished. So that he might hear their words of love and affection, so that he might hear again God's promise of eternal life.
life which he is already now enjoying. Because of this, we give thanks and praise to God alone for giving us faith. To trust in him even when times are tough, even if we should experience hell on this earth. And for keeping us in that one true faith in his holy church, surrounded by our faithful brothers and sisters in Christ who will build us up and lift us up, especially when times are hard. So now we will go back out into the cold. We will go to Hyannis Cemetery and we will go rejoice. Rejoicing with the good life God has blessed them with here on earth. And rejoicing with one another as we eagerly anticipate that life that is yet to come. In the saving name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We now stand and continue with the prayers of the church.
to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace.
Okay. Paul didn't know me. You remember who he 